Hey guys, Sean and Allison here from Spoken Garden. Hey guys. Hey guys, it's Friday. Happy Friday. You know what that means? Plant, Plant Chat, Chat Friday. Friday. Yay. You know how excited we get about plants. So we're going to talk about a beautiful plant in our yard that we planted from seed a couple years ago. Yep. Lupin, wild lupin, and it's Lupinus perennis is the Latin name. It's an amazing plant that kind of showed up a couple years after we actually had seeded it, and we have completely forgot about it. So without further ado, let's get to it. Yeah, let's check it out. So guys, uh, before we get into showing you our amazing lovely lupin here and all its beauty and its flowers, we wanted to let you know that um, we're starting to uh, update our plant chats, and one thing we're going to update with is, first we're going to give you all the facts, just, just the facts, man, right? And then uh, after that, we're gonna give you how to apply it in your own garden and how we apply it in our garden. So just make sure we're clear on that. So without further ado, here is our Lupinus perennis, our wild lupin. And uh, it's a beautiful plant, as you can see, it's in full flower. We've already got some spent flowers right there. Now, to make sure you're aware of this, this plant will self-seed. So you see those seed pods on those older flowers, it spreads really easily by seed. So if you don't want it to spread by seed, cut these away as soon as, cut, cut these seed pods and these old flowers away as soon as you can so they don't spread throughout your whole garden. So this beautiful plant is a perennial. It's zoned as hardy as a perennial from zones three through nine, so wide range of uh, climactic conditions it can actually grow in. It loves full sun, thrives in full sun, and it gets it right here in our garden. Um, it likes well-draining soil, but it can adapt really easily to different kinds of soil. So it's not particular to any one particular type of soil, but well-draining soil overall. And uh, to get it established, it does need regular watering, but once it gets established, it's really drought tolerant and it's really easy to care for with not too much extra watering. So really cool there. So now, as you can see, we've got our flowers here. They're still growing. They progress. The first flowers on these spikes will start down at the bottom. And as they progress and open, they open from the bottom up. So you can see that progression here. The older flowers are down below. And now the newer flowers are, uh, are up above here. And here are still flowers developing on this spike. And it's beautiful. Now, these, uh, these perennials, this lupin, uh, actually will flower mainly in purples, different shades of purple, sometimes blue. They can come in whites and pinks and uh, maybe even red or a rose color, but those are a little bit fewer far between. More of those colors you're going to see in the cultivated varieties, not in this wild lupin. So keep that in mind when you're looking for this to add it to your garden. Okay guys, so another thing you want to consider is these wild lupin, they can get up to 30 inches tall and about 14 inches wide. So they can get pretty good sized. And then once they start spreading, it can really take over um, a, a area of your garden fairly fast within a couple of years. And you guys, this is really cool. This plant will start flowering in spring, maybe early spring or mid spring, but all the way into early to maybe even mid summer, depending on that certain time of year and what type of uh, weather you've been getting. So it, it'll actually flower a really long time. So really cool to have in your garden. Okay, you guys, so Sean just covered some basic care needs for this plant and how it grows and whatnot. So I'm gonna start talking a little bit more about application or how to use it in your garden and maybe some companion plants you can uh, plant it near. So what's funny, there's kind of a funny story with this plant. We actually, like I mentioned earlier, we totally forgot that we had it here. And what happened is we planted this seed pack from Eden Brothers a couple, it was about what, three, maybe four years ago, mm -hmm. I think. And it was called the Bee's Knees Pollinator Mix. It had a mix of all different types of seeds in it. And we kind of spread it around our yard in different spots that were kind of bare. So this plant didn't come up for about two years. Um, which again, we forgot it was, it was even planted and it, germ it says online that it takes a little bit to germinate and kind of get established. So really we did see that. So by year probably two, I would almost say year three, that we had this flush of growth that just popped out of the ground. And at first we were like, what is that? That is so bizarre. And then we realized, oh, it's this beautiful perennial lupin. One thing we really love about it is the leaves. The foliage is just gorgeous and we've had some pest damage that we're going to talk oh, about in a yeah. minute. Yeah, yuck. But the, the foliage is just so delicate looking and so spiky. And wide. It almost looks like a, a hand almost reminds, just fully yeah. open. Kind of reminds me of a you know, star kinda, shaped almost. Yeah. It's just so cool to look at. Um, we really love the tall spiky flowers and the color is just gorgeous. Look at those flowers, you guys. I know. I love the height. <sighs> Wow. So if you're looking to add some vertical interest in your garden to surround other plants that you might already have that are either established or you're just starting over with like a perennial border, this would be a great plant. 
just keep in mind that it does get really tall. As you can see, these spikes are huge. Some of them are about two feet tall, mm -hmm. maybe more. So if you definitely you want it towards the back, probably of any borders that you're going to have. Otherwise, you're going to be cutting it and having a lot of maintenance to keep it shorter. Um, and like Sean mentioned, it comes in other beautiful colors. So um, you can kind of look around and see what's out there. Now, companion plants, there are quite a few. And Sean mentioned already, this is a full sun plant. Um, we actually have a couple other uh, lupins that we have transplanted from uh, this plant. And we used to have a very large one right over here. As you can see, this is getting way too big. We're gonna need to divide this and cut it back because um, it's taking over one of the companion plants we have here, which you probably can't even see. We have a Crocosmia plant under here. Yep. Oh yeah, there so it is. So we actually probably pretty soon will just cut this all back. One thing we haven't showed you guys yet is we, as we got out here to film our plant chat this morning, we noticed that there are aphids everywhere. And that's a problem we've had with this plant. So that is unfortunately a pest to control. Um, we know that there's a lot, there's too much mass here. It's too dense. Mm -hmm. So I think today or tomorrow, we're gonna get in here and um, really cut this back, right, Sean? Yep, yep, and we need to actually, there's multiple plants down in here. That's true, I know. Um, if we there actually get down in here, there's multiple uh, plants all mixed in here and we need to divide these out and transplant them out. Um, so that's something else on the to-do list. That's, it's amazing how fast a pest can just decimate your plant because we were just out here yesterday and did not notice this and now they're everywhere. And we have holes in the leaves which probably indicate slug damage. So, um, and we see some slug trails. So we've got a lot of things going on here. Talking about the positive stuff and Sean maybe will touch more on pests in a little bit, but um, so companion plants. So again, getting back to full sun plants, we have this beautiful Crocosmia. We also have a lavender, an oh, English yeah. lavender There's right lavender. here. Hey, there it and is. And all full sun loving plants. Look at that. We have a Shasta daisy up front. Oh yeah. So that's a little bit of a lower plant. Okay, you guys, so we have this huge lupin that we showed you multiple lupin plants here. We also had one, if you can see the space between these, this large Shasta daisy plant and this Campanula, we had lupin right in here. And it was just way too crowded. We had a big aphid problem right here on these plants last year. So you can see this, um, this is actually a tiny lupin plant that spread by seed from last hey, year. Look at those little guys. We also have one right here oh, yeah. and over there. Oh, hey, look at that. We also found some in our, our garden, our uh, cut flower bed there. Now we were like, okay, we, these plants are beautiful and we, we don't want it here. We definitely want to move it. So what we did is we divided it and we transplanted it to three new locations in our yard. So let's go take a look at those. Let's go take a look. So guys, here's one of the plants that we transplanted out of the area. Allison just showed you this was part of that mass. If you can imagine over in that area, a plant as big, a lupin plant as big as the first one we showed you and started out the video with, that's how big that one plant was getting. And so we literally had to move something out of that area. So we picked a lupin. This is part of it. We took the shovel and just divided all these plants out. We just separated them. This is one of them. There's two more behind us that uh, behind you there that we're going to show you. But this is the best one out of all of them. It looks the biggest. It's already pretty much done flowering. It's grown. It, it's had to have doubled in size by since we uh, since we planted it. So it's gotten huge. It's developed all these new leaves. I think it only had like one maybe possible stem and maybe two or three leaves on it. And now look at it. It's doing great. I really actually like I love this spot that we chose because we don't have another plant here and mm -hmm. it'll fill in this space. Mm -hmm. kind of this background planting yeah it and does it, it will spread i mean it's gonna yeah, probably it's, spread all it's the already getting bigger and yeah probably if we let these seed pods go it's gonna it's gonna spread out in this area which would be great now you can see it the leaves are kind of going this way so it's tracking the sun as it comes over we've got like mostly full shade over here but we're right on the edge of where the full sun is uh during the afternoon and so it's doing great. It's doing great. And sorry, yeah. you guys, this is a kind of a mess of projects. Oh yeah. Debris over here. Debris we got to get rid of. Cutting over here, going yeah. on. Need a deadhead. We got a deadhead, yeah. we got some so. stuff. So here's another part of the plant that we divided. So we kind of like divided it in three sections, mm -hmm. right? So this one's doing okay. It's doing a lot better. It actually died almost all the way back. Yeah, it's got a little bit of slug yeah, damage got here. Slug damage. And it's got the, the, this right here is one of the older leaves when we first transplanted it, and it's got some transplant shock it's showing there. But yeah, guys, there's new growth going on here. 
a lot of great things happening with these little guys, so we're really happy they're taken. So guys, here's the last one of the three that we actually transplanted when we divided that big lupin that we've been telling you about. And see, it's doing really well too. It's just tiny. It's, it's got a little bit, little bits going on here, maybe with some transplant shock, uh, maybe a little bit of uh, slug damage. We did see an aphid or two on this one too. So this season has been so weird for us. Uh, with pests, especially aphids. The slugs haven't been that bad this year, but so uh, talking about pests, you want to consider the pests for the lupins. It's going to be aphids, it's going to be slugs and snails, and even white fly. There could be some other ones though in your area, so make sure to check with your local extension agency to see which uh, pests could uh, come and attack your lupins. So that's our plant chat on the perennial lupin that we have in our yard, and we absolutely love it. We hate aphids but there are, at least they're treatable. You yep. know, there's some things that we're gonna do today and keep on that cycle probably daily until we take care of it. Yep, we'll take care of them. Yeah, guys, we hope you enjoyed that plant chat. This is a beautiful plant It really us. is. And uh, yeah, the sun just got changing. really bright. It just I got know. really bright. This, the clouds are breaking a little bit. Oh, and there it goes away. Um, oh, there we go. So yeah, but we hope you enjoyed it too. Um, definitely leave us any comments or questions down below. We love hearing from you guys. And make sure to subscribe to our channel so you get updates on our latest videos. Yeah, that's a wrap for today. We'll be back next Friday and every Friday with a plant chat featuring a different plant around our yard, either a perennial, an annual, a shrub. Uh, we have lots of plants, so we're excited to share those with you and yeah. teach you how to take care of them. So um, other than that, we'll be back tomorrow with our weekly Saturday morning live garden chat, Go our live. YouTube live. Yep. We'll be live at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and we would love to see you there. Yeah, guys, our topic for the Saturday is going to be designing with containers for shade plants. Oh, so that's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Love so, shade containers. Yeah, we'll have some different examples, what it exactly means when we say that, you know, container plants uh, in the shade. Uh, how to think about that, how to approach it maybe. So it'll be fun. That'll be really fun. Yeah, you guys, we really hope to see you there. Come stop by and bring your tea and coffee and hang out with us. Yep, we'll see you guys there. See you guys. Okay, bye-bye.